King Kefus and Queen Cassiopeia boasted once more of their superiority over the gods. Their arrogance knew no bounds, and they encouraged their people to stand firm in their rebellion. But their defiance was swiftly met with divine punishment. Hades appeared court. As the crowd watched in horror, Hades cursed Queen Cassiopeia, aging her to death before their eyes. But his vengeance did not end there. He warned that within ten days, the Kraken would be unleashed upon Argos, and the city would be destroyed unless they offered Princess Andromeda as a sacrifice. The clock was ticking, and the fate of Argos now rested on the decisions of its rulers. Perseus found himself imprisoned in Argos, grappling with the knowledge of his divine heritage. He was no longer just a fisherman's son. He was the offspring of Zeus, a demigod with powers he did not yet understand. But instead of feeling empowered, Perseus felt lost. He wanted nothing to do with the gods who had brought so much suffering to the world, including the death of his beloved family. In his cell, Perseus was visited by a mysterious woman named Io. Unlike others, Io did not age. A punishment inflicted upon her by the gods for rejecting their advances. She had been watching over Perseus for years, knowing that his destiny was intertwined with that of both gods and men. Io told Perseus the truth about his origins. His mother, Dine, had been seduced by Zeus in the guise of her husband, Acrisius, the former king of Argos. With anger and confusion, Perseus vowed to strike back against the gods, not for himself, but to prevent others from suffering as he had. Io urged him to take on the quest to kill the Kraken, for doing so would weaken Hades and his grip on the world. Though reluctant, Perseus agreed. As Perseus and his companions embarked on their quest, Hades was already making his own moves. Deep in the shadows of the underworld, he sought out Acrisius, the former king of Argos, now transformed into a monstrous being known as Calibas. Acrisius had been disfigured by Zeus' lightning as punishment for his rebellion, and he harbored a deep hatred for the god who had wronged him. Hades, ever the manipulator, played on Acrisius' anger and desire for revenge. He revealed that Perseus, the son of Zeus and Danae, still lived, and offered Acrisius the power to kill him. Imbued with dark magic, Acrisius became even more powerful, a force of destruction that Hades would use to eliminate Perseus and, in turn, weaken Zeus. The underworld's master had set his plans into motion, and soon, father and son would face off in a battle neither could avoid. In the dense forests, far from the walls of Argos, Perseus and his companions stumbled upon a relic of the gods. Hidden beneath the earth was a sword forged in Olympus, a weapon of incredible power that only a demigod could wield. When Perseus touched the hilt, the sword's true potential was revealed, glowing with divine energy. But Perseus, still wary of the gods and their gifts, refused the survivors. Outnumbered and overwhelmed, Perseus and his remaining companions faced certain death, until a mysterious group arrived to save them. The newcomers were the Jinn, a mysterious and ancient race of desert sorcerers who had long since abandoned their human forms for something more arcane. Their bodies, now composed of ash and dark magic, allowed them to perform feats of power that ordinary mortals could not. The jinn had no love for the gods, nor did they wish to see the world fall into chaos. Their leader, Sheikh Sulaymasa, Perseus and his companions would face certain death. Undeterred by the grim prediction, Perseus resolved to continue his quest. The fate of Argos, and the lives of countless innocents, rested on his shoulders. With the witch's guidance, he set out for the lair of Medusa, knowing that the most dangerous part of his journey was still to come. As Perseus and his companions prepared to venture into Medusa's lair, he was visited by none other than Zeus himself. The king of the gods appeared before his son, offering him asylum on Mount Olympus. Zeus saw the struggles Perseus had faced and wished to protect him from further harm. But Perseus, driven by his desire to distance himself from the gods and their machinations, refused his father's offer. Instead, Zeus gave Perseus a golden drachma, a coin of great value that held a secret purpose. Perseus soon discovered that the coin was a means to bribe Sharon, the ferryman of the underworld, for passage into Medusa's lair. With this new tool in hand, Perseus and his companions set out once more, ready to face the horrors that awaited them. The journey to Medusa's lair was fr offering words of encouragement to Perseus before he and the others ventured inside. The soldiers knew that their chances of survival were slim, but they fought bravely nonetheless. One by one, they were turned to stir from her body, the key to defeating the Kraken now in Perseus' possession. With Medusa's head in hand, Perseus emerged from the lair to find Io waiting for him. But their reunion was short-lived, 
as they were ambushed by Kalibas, who had tracked them to the lair. In a final act of vengeance, Kalibas stabbed Io from behind, mortally wounding her, using the Sword of Olympus to deliver the final blow. As Kalibas lay dying, he reverted to his original form, Acrisius, and with his last breath, he warned Perseus never to become like the gods he despised. Perseus stayed by Io's side as she passed away, her final moments filled with peace. With Medusa's head raised high, he turned the crack into stone, its body shattering into pieces as it fell. The city was saved, driven by his desire for revenge. But for now, the threat had been averted, and the people of Argos were safe. With Argos saved and the Kraken defeated, Princess Andromeda approached Perseus with an offer. She asked him to stay and rule Argos as its king, to lead the people into a new era of peace and prosperity. But Perseus, still weary of the gods and their influence, declined. He wanted no part in the politics of the city, preferring to live a life of quiet simplicity, away from the machinations of the divine. Andromeda respected his decision, though she was saddened by it. She knew that Perseus' heart lay elsewhere, and that he would never be truly happy as a king. With a heavy heart, she watched him leave, knowing that their paths might never cross again. As Perseus prepared to leave Argos, he was visited once more by Zeus. The king of the gods offered Perseus the chance to become a god himself, to join the ranks of the Olympians and live forever. But Perseus, still resolute in his decision, refused. He had seen the pain and suffering that came with divinity, and he wanted no part of it. Zeus, though disappointed, respected his son's choice. He warned Perseus that Hades would one day return, seeking to reclaim his power and plunge the world into darkness. But Zeus also knew that Perseus was strong, and that he would be ready when that day came. In a final act of kindness, Zeus used his power to resurrect Io, bringing her back to life. Perseus, overjoyed to see her once more, embraced her, grateful for the chance to be with her again. Though they had both suffered greatly, they knew that they could now face the future together. With Io by his side, Perseus prepared to leave Argos, ready to start a new life away from the gods and their schemes.